I'm Chef Maria Hines, and we're gonna be making pasta from scratch at camp. Four ingredients, it's gonna be a ton of fun. The inspiration behind showing you how to make this today, I made this at camp in Yosemite. Me and a few friends of mine went to go climb Leaning Tower. We get to camp and I was like, okay, guys, like let's create this really special meal to commemorate this climbing that we just did because it was amazing and we sent. So what are we gonna do? So pasta with just like a water bottle and then the top of a, a cooler and a climber's knife and a little jet boil, that's all you need. And you can make homemade pasta. My buddy was opening up a bottle of wine with a, a boot on a tree stump, which I had never seen before. We're gonna throw that in there too. I have not actually um, done this before. So it's either gonna go really bad or it's gonna be glorious. So we're gonna find out. I'm gonna show you today that you can have beautiful food anywhere you are. Like you don't need just eat whatever crap is there, but you can create this beautiful meal in the outdoors that becomes a part of the experience. All right, that's enough talking, let's go cook. Keep in mind, this is a situation where like, you don't have like at your camp kitchen with you. Went to the store, got a couple of things here for us. It's Parmesan cheese, and then I have some dry cured olives, have some basil, and then a little bit of prosciutto, some farm fresh eggs, local, some sun-dried tomatoes in the jar, olive oil there. Sure, we're gonna love some wine, because who doesn't love wine with pasta? A little bit of garlic, lemon, and then there's a local here that picked these really, really beautiful, I really, I gotta show these to you. So these, what? Look how incredible those are. So these are really, really beautiful local morels. This woman, Kim, she just DM'd me on Instagram and she was like, hey, I just went and foraged all these beautiful morels. Would you like some? And I was like, yes, please, when, I, when can I get them? When can I get them? And so um, we have the honor to be able to cook with these beautiful, like locally foraged foods. So, all right, back to the kitchen. Water bottle, little climber's knife right here. And then some semolina flour. Semolina flour is really beautiful to make pasta with. Uh, it's made with durum wheat and it has just like a nice little bit of coarseness and it really grabs onto the sauce or any of the flavors when you're making your, uh, when you're making your pasta. If all you have access to is just regular, you know, all purpose flour, use it. I've used it plenty of times and guess what? It makes delicious pasta. So we've got a jet boil there. Some pine nuts. Again, I really had to show you these because these are incredible. Okay, so these are store-bought organic, you know, pasture-raised eggs. And then these ones right here, these are local, like from, you know, behind the counter, cash, local farmer, beautiful eggs. You know, obviously a, a variety of, of different laying hens. These chickens, they're like pecking around and they're, they're eating grass and they're eating bugs and worms and think about all of that nutrition is right in this egg. And then the flavor, it's incredible. We're gonna open them both up so you can kind of see the difference. All right, back to the kitchen. We don't have a cutting board. So since there's no cutting board, we're gonna use the top of our cooler to cook off of today. Okay, so you want about two, two cups of flour. We're gonna call that one. And we're gonna call that two. I'm gonna create a little well. We're gonna crack our eggs into it. This is where you will see the difference in the yolk. And this is the farm fresh one. Okay, this one, you see how quickly it opens up on you? And then this one, look at that. I can't even break into it with that same amount of pressure. That's like the beautiful structure. And then look at this, you see that? so much thicker, more vibrant. Okay, so we got a couple of those. And then I'm just gonna give it a little whisk. First you wanna just kinda whisk the eggs so it gets nice and evenly dispersed. And then once it's all nice and evenly dispersed, then you can move on to mixing it by hand. And you can start kinda slowly folding in your flour here. This is gonna eventually turn into a dough. And then you can also just use water to make your, your pasta, but 
with the egg, you're getting a lot more protein in there. And look at this beautiful, rich color you're getting out of it. Okay, so all I'm doing, it's just like kind of what you do with any flour. You know, I'm kind of bringing it towards me and then I push it again, bring it in towards, push it again. And when it comes to making pasta like this with these ingredients, like it's really, it's kind of hard to screw it up. And you know what, even if you screw it up a little bit, it's pasta, it's gonna be delicious. Like, don't worry about it. You're, you know, you're in the middle of the forest and cooking it doesn't need to be perfect. I've been cooking all my life. I'm 48 now. I've been cooking since I was 17 years old. I hated school. I couldn't sit in a chair. It was just not me. I'm a very kinetic person. It was that moment, day three of being in the kitchen. I was sitting there just peeling carrots. And I was like, I can't believe I'm getting paid to do this right now. All of that like controlled chaos that's going on in the kitchen and like your senses constantly going, like you can hear the hiss of a pot when water is getting ready to boil. You can hear a sharp knife when you're chiffonading basil and it's just all of these senses, you're alive. It's the same reason why I fell in love with being outdoors and out in nature and climbing. It requires that same kind of kinetic energy and hearing that wind and watching the weather and then that same thing, all those senses in the kitchen, that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. This is gonna rest for like 30 minutes. There's a lot of gluten in the actual, in the flour. And when you work it and you work it and you work it, you end up kind of um, strengthening those gluten strands. And what happens is your, your pasta is gonna be really tough if you don't let it rest. While we're setting this aside and we're letting it rest, we'll get the rest of our, our mise en place together here. Mise en place in French, it, we use it in the kitchen all the time. It just means everything in its place. You know, the, the morels, the sun-dried tomatoes, lemon, that is what your mise en place is. Like staying really organized in the kitchen is really important. For me, I find it calming to be really organized, but I mean, when you're in a commercial kitchen, there's a strong need for that organization because everything's happening really fast. Really, like you gotta get that food out in like, you know, 10 minutes, eight minutes, you know, 13 minutes, like depending on what the dish is and you have like a rail full of tickets and you need to be so organized that like you don't even look when you're going to grab your mise en place. You'll be sitting here cooking at the stove and you should just know the morels are right there so you can throw them in the pan. You should know your salt and pepper is right there so you can put that in the pan. And the more you do that, you're just cutting out steps, right? It's just like when we're, when we're in the outdoors, right? When you think about it, like me as a climber, when I get up to the belay, I can either be faffing about and not know where my belay device is and you know the ropes are in a tangle and what am I doing? I'm, I'm losing time and I'm losing efficiency. Open that up. Directions, because I never know how to put this together because my wife always does it for me. She is not here. I'm gonna do my best to impress you all. Oh, thanks man. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Now it's been 30 minutes, our pasta is rested. Before it was like a really firm ball and you can see now it definitely has some give to it and that's what you want so you can have like a nice silky noodle. Okay, flour this down. We can take our dough. We're gonna start to roll it out with our rolling pin. You can first start out, you know, just like that. And then I'm gonna try and keep it in, in somewhat of a rectangular shape. I'm going to get our water bottle and roll it out. You can make these as thick or as thin as you prefer. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. It's just really gorgeous. Okay, so now we're going to take our climber's knife because that's all we have available to us. When you're cutting it, there isn't necessarily a trick, it's really up to you. That's a beauty of pasta. Like you can, you can do really any shape that you want. Like this is the nice, simple, straightforward, like just really nice pasta. If you keep your pasta noodles a little bit more uniform, it'll cook more evenly. This is it. We have our pasta noodles. There we go. And so now what we want to do is we want to dry these pasta noodles out and it's going to create more structure in our pasta. And we're going to hang it up on our bear rope. All right, so I want to separate it out a little bit so the air can dry it as best it can. And we're going to go probably like, we'll go 30 minutes. Okay. All right. 
A little bit of dirt isn't gonna kill us, guys. We've been in the woods all week. There we go. All right, we'll be back in 30 minutes. Hello, friends. We have beautiful pasta. And you can tell, you see how it's like a little, you see how it's kind of stiff, it's having a hard time bending? So now we know that it is perfectly dried and we're ready to start cooking it. Okay, there we go. And there we go. All right, let's go cook some pasta. Now we're gonna gather up all our ingredients and put it on the plate so it's ready to go. Whenever you have wild mushrooms, you know, you really wanna check and, and make sure they're not buggy. You wanna make sure it's clean of all the pine needles and stuff like that. Like you can see right here down at the bottom, there's a, there's a couple. It's really beautiful, looks nice and clean. It's free of insects. This was a total bonus round to have those. Parmesan cheese here. And then I found these really beautiful dry cured olives. We have a little bit of basil so we can have a nice herbaceous quality to it. Never be shy with the basil. It's so good for you. Any herbs, any fresh herbs that you use in your cooking from a nutritional standpoint, it's really, really incredible. So you wanna make sure that it doesn't take over a dish, but at the same time, it's just really good for you to have such a, a nice, beautiful, fresh ingredient like that. Once the you know water comes to boil, things are gonna move pretty quickly. So we are just making sure that we have all of our ingredients ready to go. We have some prosciutto that we're gonna put on top. Make sure we have some pine nuts. And then we're gonna take a little bit of garlic here, add it directly into the pasta water. Whenever you are cooking pasta, you always wanna have twice as much volume of water to what your actual product is. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our salt to the water. The reason why we season the water is because we wanna make sure that the pasta really soaks in uh, the, the flavor of the salt. You want the, the noodle to be seasoned all the way through. This water, it should taste like the sea. That's how salty it should be. So we have some sun-dried tomatoes. And then we're gonna squeeze a little bit of lemon so you have some acid. So when you think about the, the balance of your dish, this is gonna provide a lot of salt, these black olives, and it also is gonna bring up the acid. The lemon juice will brighten it up a little bit and so will the sun-dried tomatoes. The prosciutto is gonna give it like a nice, really rich, it's gonna give it its depth. And then you have the herbs here. The herbs are gonna give it that nice herbaceous quality. And then you're gonna get some nice earthiness coming from the mushrooms. And from the cheese, you're gonna have, uh, a, again, like a, some nice salty and, and nice, like, sharp quality to it. Okay, so I'm gonna taste this water. A Little bit more salt, the garlic's really nice in that. Water's up. In goes the pasta. And you see how the water's still boiling? That's what you want. When you drop your pasta in there, you wanna make sure that that water is still boiling. And if you have a little bit too water in the, too much water, which clearly I do, we're gonna go whoop. Depending on the thickness of your noodle, it's gonna go anywhere from six minutes and it could be up to nine minutes. I think we're there, let's see. You really wanna make sure that you go through and you test your noodle just to make sure it's like nice and, and cooked all the way through. So taste, taste, taste as you go through every step. So we're gonna throw these morels in here so we can get these to soften up. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here. So we're just gonna take this, give it a little toss, okay? I'm gonna strain this out. Okay, we're gonna add them in, and we wanna give it like a really good mix. We wanna get all of those flavors in there. All right, get the bowls here. Okay, friends, there we go. And this is climber knife, water bottle, jet boil, dinner. Something that always goes great with pasta, a little bit of vino. I'm a little scared because I'm gonna open it up with a boot. It's either gonna be really incredible or not so good. The theory is that the wine's gonna go in the boot and then I'm going to aggressively pound and 
while that is happening, there's going to be pressure that's going to push the, you know, the air is going to push the cork out. So we're going to see if this happens or not. You see the cork starting to come up a little bit. So you're just waiting for that, that pressure to come through. All right, so it's kind of out. We're gonna see if we can get this out here. They do this in France all the time. I've seen this in a Michelin restaurant. It's incredible. Table side. So we have a nice Sangiovese for you. Make sure the label is always facing the guest. There we go. Wine, open. So much more satisfying when you open it up that way. Pasta for imaginary friend. There you go. Enjoy. Here we go. Mmm. Oh my god. Oh, it's so satisfying. Nice, beautiful, thick cut noodles. That olive oil is really beautiful. Gives it the richness along with the prosciutto. Mm. This doesn't feel like a camp meal. It feels like, you know, I'm, I'm eating in a restaurant or I'm eating in someone's home. And so it just goes to show what we can do, which is a couple of a couple simple items. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you out on the trail. That's great. Let's see where you put it. <laughs> I can't say <laughs> <laughs> Not appropriate. <laughs>